Yeah, this is my video about when I got nicked twice, guys. But I'm going to start off with um, in about 19, oh, 1995, around that sort of time. Um, me and a group of my mates um, went down to uh, World Dance, which was a rave that we used to have down here, local one, in Lyd Airport in Kent. Uh, used to be in the aircraft hangars. We've done all of them anyway, me and my pals. Um, and what happened there was, I've basically gone down there. Um, I've not been dealing. All the times I've had drugs on me, guys, I've never been dealing. They've been for me. Do you know what I mean? For me. Um, so it's all, pers all personal. Um and that's the truth. I mean, if I was sitting here saying, yeah, I was, was going to knock them out in there and make a bit of dough, I'll tell you, do you know what I mean? But it weren't. It was all for me. Um, I ain't got time to sell pills in there. I'm too busy partying, do you know what I mean? I'm there for the music and to party me nut off. I ain't there to run about banging out ease all night. That's someone else's work, do you know what I mean? So basically, I've gone in the wave. What did I have on me? I had five, e five E's and um, three bags of Whiz. Um, but in the car, I left in the car about 10 E's and about another five bags of Whiz. Um, which was all mine. I mean, I just took my stash with me. Um, not, not necessarily going to do it all. But anyway, I've got that little bit on me. Um, and I've, um, I've stashed it down there where I normally stash it. Um, uh, down near the old region. Anyway, right. All in the queue and that. Everyone's in the queue, people starting to go through. Gets to my go, gets to me. Um, this geezer's come straight up to me, mate, no lie. And he's grabbed, he's put his hand right on my bollocks, right on. I think, I think it's actually illegal what he did there. I don't think he's supposed to touch him like that. He's basically put his hand right on my tackle and he, he was on it, mate. First grab. Um, and I thought, what the fuck? I just kept, to be honest, it didn't really phase me. Um, because when I get nicked, I don't really get phased, because I know why well, I'm getting nicked, you know what I mean, you got nicked, that's it, you know what I mean, you, you ain't doing a bit, you ain't, you ain't getting out of it right at that moment, um, so I don't really kick off, I just go, well, sometimes I've kicked off, but obviously if it's a fair cop there, he's gone straight for it anyway, anyway, he's had a little thing, uh, uh, and then he's w had a word to the copper, um, can you come over here, sir, I thought, yeah, all right. I thought, oh, I thought that's it. They got me there. Do you know what I mean? I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna be able to whatever. And if, anyway, they took me in this little mo mobile hut, like a mobile school hut, which is next to the entrance. And they took me in there, and there's this copper sitting down, and that's where you, that's where they hand you over the security, hand you over then to the police, um, and then it's the police's job to do whatever. Anyway, they've gone through my pockets. Um, Found, obviously found my bit. Well, he actually said to me, actually, he didn't strip me off or nothing like that. He said, "Is anything?" what's your name and all that and they run me for the computer and then he said oh what was it he seen the keys the car keys which were my pal's car keys um i i had driven down there my mate's car with my mate and i was on a band right but that's an, that's another crime i didn't didn't get called for right but obviously we're years down the line now I don't mind talking about that. Yeah, anyway, I had my mate's car keys, and he said, oh, we've, we realise you're Banfield, we've got these keys here. I said, yeah, I'm just holding them for me pal. Um, what did he say to me? What car is that then? And I said, I said never, never mind what car it is. Do you know what I mean? All them cars in the car park, I, I, you know what I mean? You go and find what one it is. Anyway, they've let me keep the keys, which was a, probably a blessing and a disguise in a way. But anyway, what, what's happened is... He's gone to me, well, if you've got anything on you, Phil, you shouldn't have, given you an opportunity now. I, and I, I thought, well, yeah, I have, do you know what I mean? You know I have. So anyway, I said, yeah, fair cop, gov. I banged it on the, do you know what I mean? I put it on now. And they said, right, well, you, you'll, you'll get a nick for that then, Phil. We're taking you off. They took me off to, where is it? Ashford Police Station, I believe. Ashford. Um, and, and, and now, I was interviewed by a woman CID officer a drug squad officer, who basically, because I was older, you know what I mean, I, was, I forget what age I was then, but anyway, she's interviewing me, she said, all right, Phil, we see you're quite lively, you know what I mean, you've got a record and that, I said, yes, miss, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm going to sit in bullshit, you caught me with, me with me a bit of stuff, do you know what I mean, and um, 
she's gone, well, she said, well, obviously it's yours. She said, I, she said, I'm here to work out whether you're selling in there, Phil, whether you intend to supply or whether you're just personal. And I said, right, I'm going to tell you the truth now, love. I said, I've been doing that. And I explained to her that I've been doing pills since they first come out, mate. I mean, I'm not one of these late arrivals to the rave scene. I was there from the fucking beginning, man. We were part of it, do you know what I mean? I was explaining to her that then five pills and three wraps of whiz I could easily consume in, in a night. Um, and after we'd finished talking, or recorded, she turned around and said, I'm quite happy to go with the personal possession, Phil. You've explained it all there. Well, that's the truth, me. And that was the truth, like I've told you at the beginning of the video. So she did the right job there, that copper, that, that, that woman. Um, and basically, I was charged with having personal on me. Um, I had to go to... Folkestone Magistrates Court, which was the right fucking mission from where I come from, up near Tunbridge. I think I ended up with a fine and all that. Didn't get dip jail or nothing, just just a fine, just for having personal. Um, and right, anyway, anyway, the next day, right, they bailed me. It got to about eleven in the morning. I'm thinking, oh no, I've got my, I'm still banged up with my pal's car keys, right? And I'm thinking, fucking hell. What's happened back there? Has my mate put the window in to get the motor going just so he can get home or whatever? And I mean, oh, I'm not in communication with him. I've been banged up all night. Um, and um, anyway, they've released me about 11 half 11 with, with the car keys, as they caught me, with my bell sheet. I thought, why? I'm going to have to go back to Lid Airport just to have a look, see if that car's there. Um, and if it's there, I'm fucking driving it on, mate. You know what I mean? I've got the keys. Anyway, we're fucking, I've got a cab back. Cost me fucking about 25, 30 notes, mate. Proper killer. Anyway, we've pulled back into a little airport, and obviously, there's a few cars there still. They're clearing up and all that. And I spoke to my mate, mate. My mate's only sitting by the back, by the back, um, wheel of the car. Um, and they put the, I think he put the window in and got in there and then got back out. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, yeah, he, he's just looking elated to see me. And I've gone, fucking hell, mate. And I've probably, cause obviously, no one knows what's happened to me until I've turned up there. And fucking me, me and my mate, he drive, we drove home. Um, my mate drove home. And that's the tower of the first one, guys. Um... Should I keep it in one or should I just upload another? I'll tell you what, we'll keep it in one. We'll just all get it all done in one shoot. Right, the second rave, guys. It's probably a bit early. It's probably about 1992, 1993. And this was another world dance, which they did in London. Um, I think it was in East London. Um, possibly. It's definitely London. Anyway, what happened there was... We, we got quite early, we got up there quite early to the do. Um, same thing again, I've hid my stash. Um, except this time I've got in there, guys, I've got in there with my stash. Um, I thought, well, I'll run around in here for 10 minutes, just have a look about, and I'll go in the bulb, get my stash out. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to roll a spliff while I'm talking. <coughs> what happened was... I've gone in the bog. I had a slash. Um, and basically I've gone. Just dropped my trousers so I could get my stash out. Which was down. I put it in my shoe that day. In my shoe it was that day. And I've gone down there to take like my shoe off. And just as I've got my shoe right. This big coloured black dude right. Massive dude jumps up. Fucking make me well. Stuff it made me jump on. No, it certainly made certainly got my attention. This massive black dude jumped. He didn't even bother and lock. You know, I mean the door's locked. So I bolted myself in, but he jumped up and boom, he's up. He's up. And he's just sitting there. Hello, mate. What you got there then? I thought, fuck it now. I said, hang on, bruv. I'll open the door. And um, obviously no resistance from me. Um, you know what I mean, geezer could have picked me up, and swung me about. Fucking. Anyway, I've opened the door. He's come in the door, and we've shut the door. He's, you know what I mean? we shut the door too. So no one else can see what's going on. He said, what's going on here then, bruv? 
I said, well, you just caught me with my stash, basically, mate. I said, it's all from me. I said, I've come up here tonight with my pals. I said, and you've caught me here. I said, that's basically what's going on. And um, he said, well, there's really one way I'm supposed to deal with this. Um, which was obviously kicking me out. I said to him, Obviously, my brain works quite quick having ADHD. My brain, I said to him, "How about we do it this way? I'll give you my stat. I'll give you this. You let me go, and I'll carry on my night with my pals." Because I said I've come a long way from Kent. I told him where I come from. I told him that's all my pals there. So if I get kicked out, all I've got to do, is I've got to get and just sit outside all night because that's where my pals' car is. And um, he uh didn't hesitate he said all right then bruv he took my thing i said nice one he said you just behave yourself i said no, i will do and i said oh, yeah, i just want to thank you for not fucking throwing me out i said nice one and i got let out of the bog just went out on my merry way didn't have no drugs because i've had to go to my mate Rig riggs i'll just call him riggs um I've just, well, they see me getting him going in now, so he's just fucking caught me in now. I said, but he ain't turfed me out, he just took my stuff. Um, and so my mate sort of lent me a pill, uh, and that's how I got by through the night, but sort of borrowing the pill off me pal. But yeah, that was mad. Um, so that just goes to show you just two different ways, do you know what I mean? The security... I doubt he went, I doubt he went and handed that in. Do you know what I mean? That went in his pocket, man. Do you know what I mean? That went in his pocket, and good on him. Do you know what I mean? I did a deal with him in the bog, and, and he went for that. Um, but yeah, you can guarantee he might have sold that, made a bit of dough, or he might have he might have been into him himself. Do you know what I mean? He was, this is back when the security was just sort of swapping that in over it. Weren't, he were not like a posh security bloke. This was a man about town. Do you know what I mean? A London man. Who knew what the coup was, and so did I. So that's why I thought, fuck it. I run this by him. I thought, I ain't going to do any, any harm, is it? I said, how about we do it this way? You take that, and I'll go out the door and enjoy my night. I said, because I ain't here to cause trouble, bro. And I said, I ain't dealing. I said, that's just for me. You could see that was just for me. Um, I suppose if, if I was a dealer, and I had fucking 100 people, well, I don't know. You know. Who knows what that would have been like. But obviously, I've never been dealing in now. I've always gone with Percy. Like I said before, I'm there for the party. I'm not there to deal drugs. Um, crazy, guys. Anyway, that's my security towels. Uh, it can go one way, or it can go another. Um, I've got out. I've got out, got out of the bog. No, the thoroughly, thoroughly good night. In the end, come back in and told me, oh man, I said, you won't believe what's happened here, boy. Fucking told me dad, because I always used, to, always used to get home, right, and I used to enjoy telling me dad all the, all the tales and that. All my rave stories, and my old man got them right from the start, mate. Right from the early days, right through. Fucking, fucking crazy. Anyway, big shout out to the well done security there. East London. Again, if only all the security was like that, but they're all not, sadly. But anyway, whatever you're doing, I'll upload this now. And there's my little tale, guys. That's my little stories. Um, do I think if I've been anywhere else with drugs? Um, don't think I have, guys. I've had quite a successful drug drug life, really. Um, considering I've been in it, in it since the start. Um, obviously, years ago. It was a lot, lot more serious, do you know what I mean, than it is now. Um, I think the legal, I think them legal highs, it was all legal. I think they're far more dangerous than any fucking recreational drug I've ever took or seen. And that's that's a proven fact. Um, anyway, whatever you're doing, stash your stash up.